that you see in the banks or you know traditional financial systems they are based on on premise warehouses and what happens is that uh, over time because the population is increasing people are having lots of accounts in the banks what's happening is that you know uh, these traditional systems are getting slower because it's a traditional database system if they are on premise systems what happens is that it becomes slower and it's not very reliable anymore because it's on premise what happens if you lose this on premise data source where how can you retrieve it what what if something happens to the archives so these days what's happening is the data is getting moved from on premise data warehouses to any kind of big data infrastructure and by big data infrastructure i mean the cloud services for example let's say amazon web services azure or you know google cloud where uh, such kind of huge databases are hosted and lots of analytics are performed on it and the biggest advantage of these systems over the traditional data systems is that there is a lot of cost saving present inside it because there is no more maintenance required for this on premise data system because you don't need to clean the servers you don't need to worry about who is going to take care of the rights on these servers what happens if there is power outage provide separate power sources for data and what happens when you move to the cloud is it becomes uh, very easy to maintain because any kind of cloud system has logs present inside it they can track these logs they can raise issues with this and it becomes very easy to track this so what happens is all of this all of this different data sources in the traditional uh, from the traditional on premise data sources of the bank they are consolidated into a single data store and the analytics can be performed in a much more convenient manner than what it could have been done previously and this helps them to manage the customers more effectively for example you are trying to set up some kind of campaign for a bank for for some kind of loan or you know you are promoting some kind of product inside the bank or any kind of financial institution it becomes much more easier you will be also able to see uh, what are the customer churn rates by customer churn rates i mean what kind of customers are actually leaving these banks and financial institution why are they leaving it how can you retain them and which customers are actually the high value customers that you have so it becomes relatively easier and ultimately what's going to happen is that for these financial institutions you are going to improve your customers experience Let's look at another use case which is also from the finance industry and that's you that's for risk management. So uh what happens with any kind of risk management is that you know for any kind of financial institution you don't have a knowledge of functioning of very small and uh, medium businesses and it becomes relatively difficult to track and you don't have any knowledge about customers ability to repay the loans also right because how would you know he's a new customer and probably he that person will do good that person will do bad so you don't know about that so these are some of the basic problems that any kind of financial institution faces when you talk about risks so what happens is that the the financial institutions or bank they try to consolidate the internal data with the external data such as you know uh what are the external events that could trigger this maybe that there is a weather event or something like that so that you know banks can banks or financial institutions can know before and okay this thing is coming up now i need to be little bit more careful maybe this is not the right time to give away loans to these particular set of customers and it will also help you to determine you know what are the influence of some kind of external factors on the performance of clients for example let's say we just experienced covid pandemic right so that that was a huge uh, you know call for the banks to look into such kind of risky scenarios and these kind of analytics you know so what we basically need to do is we need to have a predictive model that will have good models running on this augmented data where bank will have some of its internal data and bank will have some of its external data 
and these predictive models will predict whether you know that client is going to repay the loan whether it is a good idea for the uh, you know invest investment company to invest in that particular kind of uh, small company and what should be the loan repayment methods what should be the interest rate so these days guys everything is based off of a system and those are some of the huge use cases in uh, you know finance industry when you think about big data about healthcare also if you look at uh, you know if you look at uh, the covid vaccine trials for example now what they essentially did is they tried to run simulations for different formulations of a particular vaccine against the virus because as the virus is ev evolving as of now also it's all evolving they had to accumulate huge amounts of data and also they had to run certain predictive models on it they had to simulate different kind of uh, you know different kind of impacts that the particular kind of uh, vaccine would have on that particular virus before they released it that was one use case the other use case is when you look at the different kind of instrumentation uh, that you that you see in hospital for example heart rate monitors blood pressure monitors even smart watches that you see these days they are you know going to use big data because uh, when you think about the smart watches they have a model built in inside of them that takes in certain inputs from you that is like pulses from your heart or maybe the temperature of your skin or the how your skin texture looks all these variables are churned in to generate some something like something uh, what's your heart rate going to look like whether your blood sugar level is high or low or whether you are dehydrated so such kind of uh, factors are also determined using the data that is accumulated from these devices in the healthcare industry in the media and entertainment industry uh, a huge example would be you know uh, the e-commerce websites so if you if you have used amazon earlier you would be able to see that they give a recommendation panel in the bottom uh, you know just below the product that you are trying to buy that customers who bought this also bought this so that's a way of pushing some of their products that's a form of marketing because what they're essentially trying to do is they're trying to cluster some of these users and they're trying to tell you okay since you belong to this cluster maybe you would be interested in buying this because most of the people do end up buying them and what happens is that it boosts the sales of that particular product similarly you would see for entertainment you might have seen recommendations in netflix in prime video you might be interested in this that is also based on a weighted rating system so that is also big data because they also try to capture and see which scenes did you re rewind and see which series did you watch again and again what kind of movie recommendations actually worked out from what actually they showed you in that particular ott platform so these are all different forms of big data and how analytics can be used on top of it similarly for iot which i mentioned smart watches that's a very interesting use case and there is big data applications in the government guys so the aadhaar system itself is a big data system because we have crores of people living in india they all have their identification present in the government and they are trying to do it in digi locker also which you, which you might have known already where they are trying to you know uh, segregate everything into one particular application so that it will be easier for users like you and me to access information easily and we don't have to uh, go to a separate website for every different kind of uh, service <laughs> that we want to you know see so those are the different kinds of big data applications uh, present uh, in today's uh, world so guys let's just try to summarize what we just learned uh, in these in these few slides we learned what is big data and what do you mean by big data again a large amount of data which cannot be processed and stored by a single system sources of big data there are three main categories right there is people machine and organization example customer rating and social media posts are examples of people generated data data captured by sensors such as the healthcare instruments or your car sensors 
are example of machine generated data also cell phones are a good example of machine generated data and organizational data which i have already covered the organ organizations capture different kind of data like what is the churn rate what what are the different kinds of engagement of the employees hr data all such different kinds of data are the three broad categories of sources of data types of data we covered structured semi structured and unstructured i'm not going to go through the definition once again and the applications of big data so i gave you examples in healthcare in finance industry in manufacturing and the most important aspect of big data that is four v's of big data which are volume velocity variety veracity and of all these four values you try to derive what is the value present inside your big data now let's go ahead with the knowledge that we have gained so far